Hello there, welcome back to Planet Zoo and welcome back to Lunar Zoo. Thanks so much for joining me today. I appreciate spending a bit of time with you, or indeed you spending a bit of time with me. Uh, so here we are back in our zoo, which is based around structures and gardens. Uh, in our last episode, we put in this huge um, sort of uh, I don't know, big cage, basically, isn't it, for our clouded leopards to go in. And uh, through here is where we are going today. So let's wander through. Hello, Mr. Mechanic. Good to see you working hard. Right, so this is where we are working today. As you can see, I've already started a little bit of structural work. So I told you in the last episode that this was going to be a large creature that likes water, uh, which can only mean hippopotamus. Oh yes, we are building ourselves a hippo enclosure. And as you can see, this is the basic path structure which I've managed to put in. Um, I did this using the tunnel technique. So as you build the path, it automatically digs out the ground. Uh, usually I don't like to do that because it creates a lot of um, area that you have to try and fill in. But um, actually today I didn't, oh, excuse me. I didn't mind so much today um, because of the way I'm planning on designing the habitat. So the reason why there's a sunk, sunken path here is because I want this area in front of the path, all of this area here around the corner, to be water. So all of this land is going to disappear and there's going to be a large glass wall here in front of the pathway and then behind it will be a huge lake. Um, the habitat is also going to come up into this area here. So this is going to be the main land area. So there's going to be a large building here, which is going to be the indoor area for the hippos. And the reason it's going to take all of this space is because the hippos are quite large and there's going to be a fair number of them in here. So I want them to have a really big building at the top here for them to come inside. Uh, then the, the water will come around here and there'll probably be a, bit, a little bit of land along the back that they can get onto as well, is the plan. Um, but I wanted to get this pathway in. Obviously, this is the main um, sort of viewing area for the whole enclosure. Uh, there will be viewing from this pathway here looking into the bed area as well inside the main building. Uh, but obviously this is where the hard work comes in. It, we're trying to get the barrier to look good along here. And obviously I'm going to have to fill these gaps in here. These are going to be flower beds uh, with a sort of a raised brick wall of some sort around here. Um, and yeah, we're sort of, sort of making it up from there. I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing around the back side of the habitat. I'll probably use rocks and boulders as the the uh, the wall around the back. Uh, and I've got a bit of an idea of what I want to do over at, uh, over this side here as well with um, a viewing platform. So yeah, there we go. Let's uh, let me uh, let me crack on and uh, and see where we head to next. Okay, here you can see I've managed to get the water in and the um, the basic structure of the glass viewing platform along the front there. And I've put a little island in the middle as well for the hippos to eventually climb on and uh, and sleep on over here. Um, so sometimes these things go really well, sometimes they don't. Luckily this time actually the barrier was quite easy to put in. Um, I think as long as you sink the last piece of the barrier into the land there at each end then it seems to work quite nicely it's when you start doing other strange things that it just doesn't seem to, to always go as well uh, but when it's just a single straight barrier like that and it's not linked to anything else it seems to go quite smoothly so it did actually and it uh, it didn't cause me too much trouble at all uh, clearly still an awful lot to do around this barrier to make it look strong. Um, obviously I've got a bit of, quite a gap to fill in uh, along here where I couldn't raise the land. And um, and then obviously a lot of work to do along this front side here as well. But that's the basics of the lake put in. And uh, it's quite big. As you can see it's going to end up being one of my larger habitats in the zoo. It's sort of going to be equal in size to the, uh, the reptile house over here. Speaking of the reptile house, um, I know I've said this a few times, but the domes are gone. Uh, I have saved one over in the distance here, so they are still available to me, but I didn't like the domes on the roof, and so they've gone. So this is now just one large flat green roof, which I think actually looks a lot better. Even though it is a bit large and empty, uh, I'm okay with it. 
Um, I think once I've done more work around the outside, I think it won't look quite so out of place. Uh, but I don't mind it because you know you do get this sort of thing in real life, so it's it's not a it's not a big problem for me. Um, but yeah, so this is the basic shape now. Um, I've also got the gate in here, um, so you can see the. There we go. So I've put the, the rest of the barrier is in. Uh, this is the basic shape of the whole enclosure. So around this the back side here will probably mostly be rocks. Um, I am thinking. I think I, I think because I, I, I'll I'll tell you this now. I, so I think I probably mentioned this already. I have already finished this enclosure, so I know how it ends up. I'm just trying to think of my process as I was building it. And at this time, I I had just planned on not really doing much around the back here uh, but actually I do widen this a bit so I can have a small area up here with another shelter as well uh, and then this area here is square for a reason again this is because of the building going in at this end so the building is going to be a bit of an odd shape because I wanted it to go right up to this door here uh, and then around here and filling in all of this so that that was a bit of an issue trying to get the uh, the building to look good go, bending it around this pathway here as well um, so yeah, everything I do in this this habitat did present issues, but I kind of like that. I like solving the problems. Um, but yeah, I think uh, you can get uh, a sense of what I'm trying to do there. Uh, so let me uh, let me move on and see what I did next. Yeah, um, and you can see the, the rough idea of what I wanted to do. Uh, in the end, I, I at first I wanted to bend it exactly with this pathway here but it just proved too tricky to try and and do it and, and the problem you have when you do this is you can make the walls look good but when it comes to do the roof when you've when you've used lots of separate building pieces you then can't get the shape of the roof right because uh, they, they just don't link together basically and it was hard enough actually like this you can you can see the issue I've got essentially I've got a large square there and then a large rectangle here uh, and the problem is when you try and connect the roofs together it all overlaps in weird ways and you get bits sticking out all over the place so it's really hard to do uh, and you'll have to wait until the next cut I think to see what my solution is to that problem um, I use this lovely stone this is one of my favorite pieces of wall to use I just think it, it has so many different purposes this sort of stone it, it looks good in most different environments and when you put them on the corners it creates these nice corner pieces as well which is really good uh, and I wanted lots of viewing so I've used these glass pieces and the archways all the way around the pathway so that comes all the way around this corner here uh, so you can see the the hippos when they're inside inside again I've used the same roof pieces on the floor as well and then this this was actually quite an issue was getting this area working um, outside uh, so you can see on the corner here I've had to use one of these large square pieces um, in here to blend the two buildings together because they didn't quite match up properly uh, and I wanted to use these archways as the entrances for the hippos to come in and out however uh, they're too small I found out when I eventually put the hippos in they can't walk through these archways which is absolutely ridiculous but there we go that is how the game is programmed so in the end these have to go so I think this one here goes completely and this one I have to blend it into one large hole um, so that's a real shame because I really wanted to use the archways but there we go you have to work within the the restrictions of the game unfortunately um, and obviously you've got the habitat door on the outside here which just fits in nicely so the main issue I had with the building was the roof uh, and I'll have to show you how I come up with a solution to that in fact I can't even remember what it looks like in the end but I know I I have to put on a whole load of extra roof on this area just here to try and blend the two sort of the square here and then the rectangle here to make them actually work and blend together I have to put a whole new section of roof on to kind of hide all the bits that stick out at weird angles so yeah it's a bit of a bit of a pain but there we go that's you know that's the game isn't it you have to you have to do what you can do to solve these problems um, but yeah that's so that's the, the basic shape of the, the building so it's another fairly large building as you can see obviously that's the theme of this zoo is is buildings and trying to come up with different designs different looks different shapes and sizes and all that sort of thing uh, so this was the basics of this one obviously I haven't put the trims on the outside yet and I, I hadn't worked out at the time how I was going to do this whether it's going to be flat or pointed 
Um, so we will have to wait and see what I do with that. Um, so I probably need to load up my next save point and uh, and see where I went next. I suspect I continue work on the building. I think I pretty much got this building done before I moved on to the rest of the habitat. Um, so let's find out. Quite a lot of work done here. As you can see, our hippos are now in our habitat. Aren't they wonderful? I love these hippos. They look so, so good. And I think there's eight of them at the moment. I think I shrink that down to six in the end. Um, can't quite remember. Uh, but let me talk you through what I've done. So first, um, I did a bit of decorating. So I've, I've had this hippo statue. And I just had to get it somewhere. And there was this obvious little gap here. So I, I put a plinth down and put the statue on. And then I, I just fancy doing a bit of planting. So I've just continued the theming from the flowers around the tortoise habitat over here on this side. Uh, and all the way along the edge of the uh, the viewing area i've also put ivy coming up the walls of a lot of the uh the viewing um in the hippo house here i think it looks really really nice i love this it feels really nice and overgrown and jungly all the way around this corner here as well just continue all the plants all the way along here um, and that's for two reasons obviously one it would look good but also two it stops people getting too close to the glass you know little kids banging on the glass that sort of thing but you can stand here and you can quite clearly see the hippos walking around inside and and having their mid-evening snooze as well afternoon snooze um, and the ivy as well i just you know nice and random i think I, the ivy looks really good in this game um, so yeah really pleased with how all that turned out so this is the solution that i came up with on the roof um, so after having the steep sides here, I decided to go with the, the slightly smaller slopes on the peak of the roof here on this square piece uh, just to create a slightly odd shape, which I really liked. Uh, and then I've gone with the steep pieces on this rectangle here. However, I then had to put this extra piece in the top here just to get the two pieces to blend together properly because they just they just didn't. It just it doesn't work. Unfortunately, when you have them growing at odd angles like this. It looks absolutely fine here uh, and, and fine here but then when you get to the top here you just can't get it to blend together it just doesn't look right uh, so this is what I came up with and I think it looks absolutely fine I mean it doesn't serve any purpose and obviously from the inside you can't see it because it's all hidden I mean look at the mess it's it, there's just pieces of roof all over the place here um, so yeah it is what it is and it is a mess but uh, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't look inside, just don't look. Because you can't see it from inside the, the thing. Obviously I've got the roof on here, so it, it doesn't matter. I've also put lights inside here as well um, for the hippos at night. Um, but yeah, so that's, uh, that's that. So uh, I think that looks fine. I think I do do some more detailing on the building. Um, we shall see. So here, like I said, I had to open this up. Unfortunately, I didn't have a lot of choice. This needed to be a big opening here for the hippos to actually get in and out. So the doorway that was here has gone. Uh, I changed the square piece that linked the two buildings here for one of these nice angled pieces, just because I thought it looked nicer uh, having that on the corner there. I can't remember, but I think I do come back and do something in this doorway here. I'm sure I'm, I build some sort of an edge to it. I can't remember that. We'll have to keep an eye on that and see what I do. Obviously got some bedding around inside here for the hippos. So they're pretty happy inside there now. And I also extended the land just a little bit here as well. Sort of halfway along here. So they have the choice when they come out. They can either walk out onto the land or go straight down here into the water. Uh, temporary building, uh, sorry, temporary um, barrier around the back here made of brick. Just to give me an idea of where the edge will be. And obviously to keep the animals in while I tested the uh, the terrain to make sure they could get around properly which they can um, and then when I when I was doing this and I, I, I realized I wanted another viewing area I didn't just want it to be this area where you're looking at them into the water or this area where you're looking at them in the bed I wanted a, a sort of an aerial view so this is what I've done so a large round viewing platform here that's linked to a path over here um, because I did that I then also put this extra pathway here just a gentle slope coming down from the leopard habitat to link into this and eventually this pathway over here will come around the bottom as well and link into this one here uh, so you can see this is why I didn't do too much work on this because of what I'm doing around here until I do, do all of this work I didn't want to fill all of this in 
Um, but yeah, so this is a really, really nice little viewing area. So you can imagine if you were, if you came up here, you'd you'd get a nice view along at the whole habitat and looking straight down as well at the hippos right underneath you. Um, and that turns out really, really nice. Come the end, I build a nice big shelter up on that. So yeah, there we go. You can see uh, the the idea of the habitat now. It's taking shape quite nicely. And this obviously this area over here is looking really detailed now. And this is how I'm going to continue it as well. I'm really going to try and um, sort of, you know, sort of perfect each area as I go along. It's how I like to do my work generally. Um, I have no idea what I do next. I'll have to load up my next save game and find out where I move forwards from here. Um, yeah, so let's do that. Let's uh, let's load it up and uh, and see what I I move on to. Working on the uh, the water viewing area, as you can see. So these um, these gazebo trellis things uh, are something that I've used before. So I've, I, I originally created it here and then I used it again over here as well and in fact over there. So it's, it's a piece that I've got and I keep reusing it because it's good and it continues the theme, you know. It continues sort of links areas together by having a similar kind of, um, you know, structure that repeats itself through the whole zoo. So I put those in here because I wanted it to sort of be dappled shade under here. I think if you were down here on a hot day, it'd be quite nice to come and sit down here and relax and view the animals uh, while under a little bit of dappled shade. So that was my thinking there. Um, and then these are going to be flower beds. So I've again continued the theme of the using the topiary hedging. Uh, around the, the the edges of these areas so I've continued that over here so I've created it around all of these gaps um, all the way over here I haven't done this last piece here because again I had an idea of something that I wanted to put in here but I wasn't going to do that for a while yet so I'm only just going up to here for now uh, but I think these look really nice actually these these um, hedges as uh, as as edging hedging as edging you know what I mean um, and obviously in the middle here it's all going to be shrubs kind of just filling up the gap um, and they end up looking really good as well so that's uh, that's all pretty good uh, and then for the barrier itself I've used these large logs obviously these are meant to be big artificial logs usually when I do these glass water viewing areas I use the um, the big sort of concrete beams or the stone beams because they look really nice and solid but I wanted to do something different so I use these giant logs along here just turning each one slightly differently so they don't look too um, too similar to each other uh, and they, they they just cover up all the joints basically uh, and then because I had this this gap didn't I as you can see here uh, where the path and the land don't meet uh, I've just done a layer of rock all the way along there just a, a flat layer of rock just to fill in the gaps and link the areas together um, and just creates a nice edge along here as well to the pathway so yeah really simple but really effective I think it's uh, it's all taking shape quite nicely and when you view it from the above I think the shape looks really nice I love the, the curve here again just kind of linking or continuing the structure from this building here all the way around the edge and eventually there is more structure that goes in here as well that links the whole thing again to this piece here um, and again I know I'll keep repeating myself but that's what I'm trying to do in this so I'm trying to link it all together so it doesn't all feel like individual habitats I want a lot of it to really blend together so it doesn't doesn't feel like you've just built a habitat here and a habitat there and a habitat there I want everything to blend in together and I'm mostly using structures to do that whether it's working or not I don't know I mean you tell me you're you're the ones viewing um, so you I don't know you you decide for yourself um, that's that's my aim at least um, so that that's sort of the main structure now done I um, obviously I've still got this platform to do a structure for and I do actually do another small structure at the back here as well um, but it's uh, yeah it's taking shape quite nicely this, this took me quite a while to do doing these hedges because of course each of these areas was a slightly different shape and size so all of this hedging had to be done individually I couldn't just copy and paste anything so that did take me quite a while um, and it will take uh, a bit of time doing the shrubbery that fills it in because again it's you know everything's going to be placed individually I don't do any sort of copying and pasting of, of shrubs you know um, so yeah, it's time consuming, but the end result is well worth it. I think it does look really, really nice in the end. Um, right, so let's move on and uh, and see what I get up to next. 
Right, so I um I filled in the shrubberies now. Um, so I used my usual sort of mix of brambles. You got the creosote bush. Uh, oh, I can't remember what this one is. I always forget the crimson turkey bush. Uh, with some sage as well. Um, so all my usual favourites. And I just went through and and just you know just stepped to them. Got some scavola in there as well. And then with all of these, it's very similar. Just you know high to low. Just keeping it filled in. Um, you know mixed up looking looking natural um, or as natural as I, I could get it anyway and I think they look really really nice uh, now the one thing I noticed once I'd done them uh, and I stood back I decided I'd, I just I needed something else in there I needed some some height because it was just looking all very flat uh, and so I put these poplar trees in so so one per border uh, and I think they really make the whole area stand out much much better um, I think you'll agree it, 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 it needed something there just to add a bit of height and obviously from a distance as well you just want something you want you you always want something in the distance from wherever you're looking so from over here as you walk through um, you can see the trees there and it just pulls you in just grabs your eye makes you uh, makes you wonder what's over there and, and and the same from over here as you walk along you can see the trees in the distance here so it just gives you that sense of oh there's something over there let's go and have a look um, that, that's always my thinking with these things um, and I also just put some education boards down here with some bins and some benches as well just uh, so some people have got somewhere to sit down and they can have a bit of a read about the uh, the hippos that they're watching yeah there we go so that, that that's this update very small update so it, it but it took me a while so there's not a lot to talk about but it did take me quite a while to do all of that um you know placing of the shrubs down i you know when i do these things i do take my time i don't just plonk them down and yet that will do i move things around uh, i make sure each each area looks different to the next um you know I'm, I'm constantly redoing it and just jiggling stuff around trying to, trying to make it look as natural as i can um and hopefully it works hopefully the, the time that i put in uh, makes it makes it look good I don't know you can be the judge of that um, but I'm certainly pretty happy with uh, with how that all turned out also just put a little bit more ivy on this wall here and even just a piece just in here as well just because I didn't want to leave the wall blank so there we are that's where we're up to oh yes and I covered in this bit because uh, again this this was glass here and I just covered it up with a bit of wall I just didn't think that looked right being glass I wanted it to be a nice backdrop to this border here um, so it made sense for me to cover that in with a nice bit of stone wall um, okay so that's it for this little update uh, I think you'll agree this front area now is looking really nice it's, it looks uh, looks lovely and smart I think um, so obviously the main habitat has still got a lot of work to be done um, still got obviously the water I've got to work out what I'm doing with the island I've got an edge of some sort to build around the outside so I can get rid of this brick um, plus of course the uh, the large structure that I build up on this viewing platform as well so yeah still a lot to do so it's going to be a, a relatively lengthy video I think this one because there is quite a lot to get through uh, but in the end the habitat does work out to be uh, a really nice looking thing and uh, the hippos love it oh look here's one just coming out for a little afternoon swim and one thing I didn't mention actually obviously I, I made the water nice and shallow because this is what hippos like they don't like deep water because they, they believe it or not hippos can't swim I've probably mentioned this before and it's something that a lot of people don't know is that hippos don't swim um, they they can't propel themselves in the water they can push off from land and glide through the water but they do need the land to push off as you can see he's pushing along the ground he's and he's walking there you go so he's walking if this was deep he would be walking along the bottom you wouldn't see them gliding through the middle of the water uh, that is that just isn't what they do they, they don't swim they have to push themselves and so I, I purposely made it this shallow um, because this is exactly the sort of shallow uh, water that they like so they can they can safely submerge themselves while at the same time uh, push themselves along using the floor so there we go a little bit of information about hippos for you there uh, apologies if you already knew that but I'm sure a lot of people didn't and I do like to educate whenever I have a bit of knowledge which is very rarely but uh, you know sometimes I know things and uh, I like to share right let's uh, let's move on right so I've been busy with a bit of rock work here um, I decided I wanted to have a bit of land at the back here for uh, the hippos to come up onto 
Uh, I didn't want them to just have the water and the small island because it's not a very big uh, area here. So I decided to do the rock work as the border. It's a, it's a logical thing. You see this in a lot of zoos. They use these rocks these days for um, for edges, or for things like hippos or elephants because they just can't climb over them. Uh, whereas obviously a lot of other animals could, but things like that can't. So it make, they make a very effective barrier and they look really natural as well, which is what you want as much as possible in a zoo. Um, so I continued them all the way around the base of this to make this look like it's sitting on top of the rocks, which I think looks really nice. Obviously, I still need to build a shelter for that. And I've got some of the uh, enrichment items in. I thought it'd be nice to have this shower over here. So when you're standing up on the viewing platform here, you can look down and watch the hippos having a shower. So that might be kind of cool. Um, a little bit of bedding on the island here. Originally I was toying with the idea of having a shelter on the island but I decided not to and as you can see I've put these two mud baths at the back here and I've given them a, a small rock surround as well around the edge to get rid of the wooden edges. So I'm actually going to have a, sh a small shelter built over the top of those um, so that they stay nice and wet because um, in, um, in, a, in a hot environment or even just a, a normal warm environment uh, like here in the UK, a mud bath like this would dry out uh, during the summer, which you wouldn't want for your hippos. You'd want that to stay nice and wet. So I'm going to build a shelter over there. Then they've got um, a couple of food things either side here, some barrels and, and one of these hanging feeders here and a scratching post and a tire, which is actually meant to be just here, but it's, uh, they keep throwing it around and for some reason they always seem to throw it onto the rocks. Uh, but never mind if that's what keeps them happy. Oh look, he's charging out. This guy's hungry. Om nom 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 nom. <laughs> Brilliant. Right. So yeah, sorry, that was just a, a very quick update. I haven't really done a lot. I just wanted to show you my structure work. So that is basically the habitat, um, the main structure done now. Uh, so they, they can't escape, which is very important, of course. Um, yeah, we're looking good. We're looking really good i'm very happy with how it's turning out and i like that they can come out of the uh the bed area straight onto the the land as you can see here so they, they don't have to go in the water if they don't want so they've got that choice and then they can they can walk all the way along here on the land as well and of course they got their little island now look have a little snooze on the island why not he feels nice and safe up there and the good thing is as well when they're when they're out here they're not going to feel like they're being watched because all the viewing from here i know you might get people standing up on the uh, on the ledges up here or you know on the pathways on, on the steps but all the viewing really is happening below the water level down here uh, so obviously when you're standing here you can see them doing this walking by in the water um, you can't really see them actually up on the land which is kind of my 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 thinking behind it i didn't really um, I, I didn't want you to be able to see the land from up here. I wanted this specifically to show you the water. And if you want to see the land, you've either got to come up the stairs up here and have a look at a bit of a distance view, or obviously go up into the viewing area up here. Um, and even then, you know, you're a fair distance away from them. Um, that was my thinking there. So they, they can have a bit of privacy, a little bit further away from any human beings. Uh, right, anyway, let me uh, let me crack on with some more and I'll be right back. Right, I just wanted to show you the shelter that I have built. I wanted it to be a really sturdy looking thing. Um, don't know why, I just, I just felt it needed something very strong looking up here because it's, it's, it's quite a prominent structure. Um, and I didn't want it to be some flimsy thing. So if you look at this uh, wooden log that I used in this habitat, um, it doesn't look particularly strong. Obviously it is you know strong enough to contain an animal uh, but I think if I use the similar looking one here it would look a little bit weedy so this is what I went with these giant logs and it's a very again very simple structure um, use the, the the same technique of, of just putting one down mirroring it and then copying it around and around um, and then I, I wanted to decorate it a bit and so I used some of these African posts at the top and just did exactly the same thing and it makes this lovely pattern on the roof um, which I think looks really really nice so yeah it's a, a very simple technique but it has a really nice effect 
visually it's you know it's a very nice looking thing so i'm really pleased with how that turned out and then on the inside i wanted to have some lights in here and i love these ball lights these globes that you can just kind of sink into the walls um and so i thought i'd i'd use these dead trees is this what i can't remember is this one yes actually it's just one tree yeah um so i sunk this in and just kept turning it until i got the branches how i wanted them um, and so I thought it, it looked pretty decent. I mean, obviously, it's, it's in, in the real world, it would be a, a fake tree, obviously, meaning, you know, uh, um, trying to look like a real tree. That was that's what I'm trying to say. Um, and so that's that's exactly what it is. It's a, it's just a big fake tree, basically. And then I've just put the globes um, up on the branches here, looking like they're just sort of not hanging because they they're sort of embedded in them, but. Um, yeah, I think it looks cool and if you turn it to night time, I think it, it just creates enough of a glow under there once they turn on. There we go. I think that looks really nice. A few picnic tables underneath as well so people can be in here uh, just eating their lunch while other people are stood around the outside having a look at the animals. So yeah, there we go. Nice and simple. It's simple but effective. That's A lot of my stuff is simple but effective. It's what a lot of people would say about me as well. Um, so yeah, so that's you know it's not the most spectacular structure in the world, but it's um, it's functional. I think it looks good. It fits in. So yeah, there we go. It's um, yeah, I'm pretty pretty pleased with it. I think it's um, it's come together nicely actually. This habitat, I'm very pleased with it so far. Just a little bit more work to do around the back here, I think, really, and then we're sort of done. So a bit of vegetation. I've got the shelter to put in here as well. Um, and then uh, and then I think we'll be done so let me go away and crack on with a little bit more I've been a little bit naughty and I have finished our hippo habitat I got a little bit carried away and I just kept on building and suddenly realized I hadn't actually uh, stopped to save my game uh, so never mind it's uh, I'm, I'm so happy with how this looks now <laughs> so let me uh, let me just dive right in and show you um, so this is the shelter let's start there um, I, I don't know why I chose this I wanted this green roof just because I hadn't really used it much in the game and um, I just thought it might look nice here so um, I've given it a, a wooden structure sort of framework uh, and then a simple um, simple shape and I just wanted to use this pointed bit on top um, yeah I don't know it's uh, it's not it's not perfect but it's it does its job you know the hippos can come in underneath it provides plenty of shade for them um, the reason I was using this copper, one more reason I was using the copper is, like I said before, I wanted this to be a cool area, a shady area. Um, and, and I think this green is meant to look like copper, because uh, copper turns green when it's, is it when it's rusted? Or when it, you know, when it's old or no, or if, is it, if, I can't remember it. Maybe when the, um, like the, the surface color comes off underneath it's green. It's something like that. There's something to do with copper and green anyway. Um, but copper is a cool metal. It stays cool. So um, I thought that would make sense to have this um, covered in copper. Um, I don't know. It may not even be meant to look like that, but uh, that's what I think it is. So There we go. So that is our little shelter there, covering up the mud baths for our hippos uh, to lie underneath. Um, vegetation wise, First thing I did was, was continue the um, the poplar tree. So the big ones that I put out the front here, I thought it made sense to continue the theme of them around the back. So I've used some of the different sizes of them, just dotted a few around, a couple of these large ones in the background there, and then the smaller ones nearer the front, uh, and then a couple more of the tall ones as well. Um, I put a couple of these sort of dead trees in as well. Uh, I just like the look of these. And I generally put these around water because what I like to do with the water, as I'm sure you know if you've seen any of my other videos, is to put some of these dead logs in the water. So you've got one there, you've got one here in the front of the water, just kind of floating. Um, and I did put another one over here again, just fallen over and just leaning against the rocks there. Uh, oh, and a stump as well. Um, I just think they look really cool when you especially when you lean them like this I think it just look makes the area look so much uh, more natural um, so yeah so that's that that's and, that, and that's kind of why I've done that even if they are the wrong sort of trees you, you can get away with it it's um, you know it looks good 
and that's what matters. I want to put another stump in there as well. Why not? Can't have too many tree stumps, can you? Um, so other than that, uh, I kept the foliage quite simple around the back here with the rocks. Just some simple sage, some of the Corolla. Is it Corolla? No. Creosote, sorry, creosote bushes, this yellow one. Um, really didn't want too much variety on these rocks. I didn't really see a need for it. Um, so that they just continue all the way around the back here, uh, around the viewing platform as well. Um, and yeah, just all just wraps all the way around there. Uh, so very simple uh, work on the rocks. In the water again most of my favorites um, so you've got these uh, these bull rushes I absolutely love the look of these they're fantastic I do like some of the other ones but they block the animals um, traversable area so they're just no good when you actually look at it practically as you can see the hippos can walk straight through these whereas if you put the other um, the other rushes in then um, they can't it blocks them off and and it's just stupid I don't know why it's been programmed like that but it's really annoying because the other ones do look really cool as well um, but they're just not practical to use so I generally stick with these bull rushes uh, and then some floating lilies um, I love these they look fantastic uh, so again you just got a few dotted around a couple there uh, a little one here and then a couple over here as well um, just adds a bit of color you know just a bit of texture to the surface of the water and then underneath the water again just most of my usuals down here so you've got this lovely moss thing i can't i can never remember what it is the underwater hydrilla plant um so i just cover the floor basically in that and then i use this eel grass i think it's eel grass one day i will remember this and actually get it right yes it is there you go underwater eel grass uh just so so that is just dotted around from place to place you'll, you'll see just little patches of it underneath just to keep it all looking natural um, I didn't do any sort of copying and pasting or anything under under this. Um, you know, just yeah, just just filling it up, just making it look busy and natural and aged. You know, looking looking like it's all been there for a while and stuff's been growing. And uh, and of course, my my old favourite again. This is something that I tend to do when I've got a, a pond or a lake. I stick one of these canoes in at an angle, just sitting on the on the water, just you know, like it's slightly sunk, so it's been abandoned. You know, it's just a little a little bit of um, a little bit of whimsy. I think that's called um, you know, just uh, just something there to entertain the hippos. It's probably either tied to the shore, or if it's not tied to the shore, then the hippos could probably just sort of push it around with their noses and you know, play with it like a toy. Uh, but it looks good and that's all that matters um yeah so very pleased with uh with the with the look of this whole area really i think it once you do the vegetation in any habitat it really brings the whole thing to life um you know you can imagine you, you saw what this habitat was like before i did all the the, the bull rushes and the trees and the bushes and it just looks a bit dead doesn't it but as soon as you put the greenery in it just looks like a, a living habitat and uh, and that's exactly what it is now and, uh, and that's it we are we are done with our hippos um it's been quite an epic project this one and uh I, again i apologize if this has turned into quite a long video oh look at that dude he was up on the rocks trying to escape i'm sure his traversable area doesn't let him go up there no it doesn't how on earth was he up there cheeky monkey hmm all right um yeah so it's probably been quite a long video but oh look we've got a koala out on the platform no oh, isn't that cute oh he's tried to escape oh what a naughty koala <laughs> typical just as i say it's cute he gets put in a box <laughs> oh dear never mind i think he i think yeah the the edge of that the, the barrier might just Hang on, let me just check that i'm sure i got the barrier no do you know what i probably need to move that barrier out a little bit don't i i think if they go right to the edge of this platform uh they can they, they're classed as escaping i think let's have a look yeah, it doesn't say so actually that's why I, I hadn't noticed it before but i'm guessing that's what happens if they walk to the edge here it thinks they're escaping it's a shame because otherwise they could sit there and watch the hippos couldn't they that'd be kind of cute wouldn't it a koala watching a hippo <laughs> Um, anyway we're just about done um, actually yes I did I can't remember if I mentioned this in a previous segment of the video but I have put some media down here as well as some benches and some bins so people can sit down here and relax and watch the hippos meandering through the water if they're there they're not there at the moment typical 
is there not a single hippo in the water? They've all scarpered. Oh well, never mind. They'll be back. Uh, so down this end, sorry, just quickly down this end. This is this is all I'm doing for now. Is just this this hedge edging here, uh, because this is all going to be done in a separate video. So there's a lot of backstage bits to do here and filling in. I've got a bit of an idea of something to go in here, uh, but for now that's going to be uh, uh, done at another time. Uh, so that is it. If you look. At at it from up here I think you'll agree it looks pretty damn cool I'm very very pleased with how this has turned out I'm pretty happy with all my structure work I think the building looks good um, I'm very pleased with the the shape uh, of the trellis here going around the corner I think that looks cool and then you've got a nice round bit there and a square bit there and you know the contrast in shapes is is important that's something else I'm going for with the buildings not keeping everything to the the same shape but trying to trying to you know trying to come up with different different shapes and sizes and colors and textures and all that sort of thing and um, yeah I think uh, I think I've done an okay job with that one so there we go that is our hippo habitat and um, I can't actually think what I did after this because I've already I've already done a bit more building let me tell you and I think it's over here I believe um, there is a habitat that goes in over here uh, I believe that is what I do next, but it may not be. So I'm 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 not going to tell you what that one was because I do also do a habitat over here, and I can't remember if I do that one next or if I do this one. I'm so badly organised with these videos, aren't I? I? I build so far in advance sometimes before doing the commentaries that um, uh, I don't actually remember what order I've done things in. But anyway, there's going to be a habitat over there, and there's going to be a habitat here as well. Um, one of them will be in the next video, I think. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, you'll have to watch the next one and find out, won't you? So anyway, that is it for me. Um, there's a quick overview of our zoo so far, and I'm absolutely loving it. I think uh, Luna Zoo is coming along very nicely. So please do let me know what you think down in the comments. And uh, yeah, hopefully I can see you in the next one. So thank you very much for tuning in, spending a bit of your time with me. I really do appreciate it and hopefully I'll see you soon. So until then, do take care of yourselves. Bye for now.